So I want to take a look at this form here that I've got. I've got this sort of curvy wurvy form and it is has a couple of features that are kind of interesting. So for instance, if I select one of these pieces, I am looking at a panel that is curved in three dimensions, uh, which is something that's unusual, something you wouldn't see in Revit 2012 or there before. What I'm in here is I'm in Revit 2013, my shiny new copy of it. And I want to just show you a little bit about something that's called repeat and divide, which is kind of fun. So I'm just going to back up out of here and sort of show you what's underneath. So we've got a surface that has a division on it. And if you just look again at where this came from, I've got these sort of big chunks. It's not quite the same scale as the grid that's underneath it. So I'm going to go back to a grid size that does represent that, which is half of this. And I'm just going to show you sort of where we came from in the last release and where we are now. So if we look at that sort of grid, which is the same scale as what I had before, I'm going to take it, I'm going to pattern it with, you know, what would be, you know, sort of a regular extrusion, uh, just a four point panel. And, you know, it's not without its charm. Uh, but it's pretty chunky and it's a little weird looking, right? And this is sort of the standard behavior that you'd get with a basic panel. So I'm going to edit that just to sort of show you what it is. It's just a basic, you know, extruded panel. There's nothing fancy in it. Uh, and this is sort of what it looks like if you're getting it on top of one of these surfaces. And you can improve that a little bit by doing a seamless panel. Here, I'll just do one of these guys. And I'll show you what that's made out of. And what this just does is it seals up the cracks in between each one of them. But it's still pretty faceted. And maybe that's what you're going for. Maybe it isn't. Um, but here, I'll open one of these guys up too to show you what the difference is. So this one is based on sort of a point rig geometry. I've had other posts on this. And in the post, I'll actually give you links to how to make these things. But basically what this does is that you get a surface that's based on the sort of projection off each one of these points to give you that sort of seamless look. But I want to do something that's even better than that. I want to do something that is actually going to follow the curvature. So the problem here is that you've got this division along the surface. And basically, any time that we go and we pattern it, um, what you're basically doing is you're just connecting the dots with straight lines. You're taking this point and you're connecting it with that point, and then something happens in between it. But you don't have that kind of knowledge for any panel to sort of span across this whole thing. So what I'm doing is I'm going to just sort of show you how this goes together. We can dissect it a little bit. What I'm going to do is First, I'm going to increase the resolution of this grid a little bit, but you'll notice that my panels are still going to stay the same size. So I've got my 5 by 10 grid. I'm going to make it 10 by 20, like so. But I'm still going to have those big panels that I was showing before. So I've got my adaptive component here, and I'll take this one. And what it is, is it's, uh, it's a 9-point panel. And I'll just place one here on level one just to sort of show you how it goes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a nine point panel. And it just makes this sort of floppy surface. Now, if I take this same panel and I go one, two, three, four, five, where is that guy? I don't think my things are hosting here. So if I've got my guy here on my, yeah, what's going on with my refresh? Sorry. All right, one more time. I got my panel. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Bear with me, I'm almost there. Seven, eight, nine. Whew, okay. There, I got nine placements. Now, if I was going to do that over this whole surface, oh, what a pain in the ass. So I'm not going to do that, but I am going to just sort of take a look here at what I've got, which is this nice panel that now covers the whole surface in a smooth way. Now, this nice little function here, which is very subtle, but you can see there's a little P here on the array 
button. And the array button used to be completely grayed out. But what this does is this is repeat. So I've just placed this thing. I've shown sort of a, a layout that I want it to have. And now it's going to repeat that over the whole surface. And it'll churn through it while it thinks about it for a second. But then it's going to populate the whole surface like that. So you can see that I've still got my divided surfaces showing up. But now I've got panels over the whole surface. And I can isolate those for a second just so we can take a look at them. And so, sure enough, I've got these little guys. And what are these guys? These guys are an adaptive component, which I'll just open up. And it's nine adaptive points. And I can just show you the basic way to make this. It's not too complicated. But if I take my point tool and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I select them all like that. I make them adaptive. And then basically, I'm just going to make myself a bunch of splines through them. And each one of these splines is then going to get lofted together into a form like that. So I'm just going to, because I like reference lines, I'm going to make these all reference lines. Just makes it a little easier to control. And, uh, I think usually I have to pull these guys out of plane so that they actually sweep. I'm not exactly sure why that's a limitation, but it is. So, I've got my reference lines. I'm sorry, I sound so tired. It's because I am. So now I've got my nine point component, and that's all it is to it. And that's what I had loaded in here before. So, you know, because it's a component, I can replace it with other things. So I can select this guy and I can say, and replace it with my one that's thickened, like that. So now I've got my curved surface, which follows my old surface, but is actually made out of components that have some dimensional quality to them. And this one is a little bit more complicated. If I open it up, you can see that it's basically following the same principles as the seamless panel, which is I've got points hosted on top of other points, like this. And again, it's the same principle as the seamless panel, which there's a link to. And then I'm making a bunch of profiles. And I'm just sweeping those profiles all together into one solid component, like that. And then it follows the same principle. I place nine of them. I place nine points. And then I can do whatever I want with them. So then I can also just, you know, I've got, I've got some ones with mullions. If I want to replace those. Uh, let me see here. Where's my mullion? There he is. I'm giving a second to churn through that. So that was my little Julia child, just to let that percolate through. And so now, so here's the fun thing, is that now you've got a curved mullion. You've got a mullion that follows the curvature of the whole surface. And that's something that people have been asking for in the past, is something that can follow the curvature rather than being faceted. And finally, I've got one other trick up my sleeve with this guy. And so uh, let me just show you this one too. Uh, if I edit that, you'll just see it's it's pretty similar to the first one. And then it's just a flat surface that's got, you know, a mullion swept along the edge or something mullion-y. Now this seems, well, kind of impossible to manufacture or very, very expensive. Nothing's impossible. We put a man on the moon for God's sake. Um, no, I don't want to save this, but uh, most of us don't have the budget for that. Um, one thing I'm experimenting with here is something that actually rationalizes this. So I've got one other one of these guys, which is uh, another curved mullion, but it's made out of arc segments. That is, so every one of these pieces that's a mullion is actually uh, based on an arc, which is, if we open this up for edit, I've got a nested component in here, which is a little more complicated again. But basically, I've got this component, which will always stay in the form of an arc segment. That is, it's not a curvy spline weirdness, but it's actually sort of a rational mullion. So this is a curve, this is an arc, this is something that you can manufacture I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is a whole lot easier than a spline. And if I replace this, there's going to be a couple places where it flattens out so much that the arc just breaks. But uh, just to sort of show you what it does and the direction it's going in, still experimental, but uh, bear with me. Yeah, and so it doesn't even look all that different. 
but these guys are all arc segments. And then you can see, this is, this is where it gets a little goofy, is that a couple of these things, like right here, where the arc gets so flat that my arc breaks and it sort of shoots off into space here. But just to sort of show you that these are in fact sort of rational segments, you know, I can go in here and I'm just going to turn off my hide isolate. And if I take my measure tool and I take my radial dimension tool, I can go in and I can, oh, wait, where's my work plane? Yeah, okay. Where's my, let's see, yeah, there we go. So now you can see that this thing's actually made out of arcs, you know, which people like for, you know, actually building stuff. And uh, the same is true for the, the vertical mullions as well. So you could actually go through and you could schedule with the arc length and what the, and what the, uh, what the radius is for each one of these and actually think about building some of these maybe without this crazy tangent that goes all the way off into space. But I'll put these files up online so you can download them and inspect them if you like. And I uh, hope that could be remotely useful to you guys. Thanks for watching.